Hey guys, and welcome to another week of online chemistry. Um, for today, we're doing the combined gas law and gas law application stuff. Um, basically, where do you see gases behaving in your everyday lives, and um, how can you start to explain these phenomena that kind of we take for granted, but are really the work of really complex, interesting uh, gas behavior. So. Over on this side of the window, I have the PowerPoint that we'll have posted. This is something that you can download um, and interact with, but not something that you can edit. The thing that you can edit is over on this side of the screen. Notice it says, turn this in. When you open this and you start editing it, you'll see that turn in button. So you'll be able to do this question, this question, basically these guiding questions down the side of the reading. Um, this guy, I encourage you to recreate a version of this in your own notes. I already put out some of it, um, but this is gonna be really, really hard for you to edit in this uh, document format, so I would forget about trying to edit this. Just do it in a notebook. Um, and lastly, here is your exit ticket. We're gonna get to this a little bit later, and we're gonna come back to this in a little bit. So let's go over and look at our PowerPoint. All right. So first lesson of this unit, uh, we talked about Boyle's Law, relationship of pressure and volume. When you uh, pressurize a gas um, or you, you shrink the volume of a container that a gas is in, it's going to occupy a smaller space. You're going to have more collisions of gas particles, particles bumping into the walls, bumping into each other, and that's going to cause the pressure to go up. Likewise, if you make the container of your gas really, really big, then you're gonna have much fewer collisions and a much lower pressure. Um, then we followed up with Gay-Lussac's law, which is the relationship of pressure and temperature. Um, and when you change the temperature of a gas, you change the speed at which the particles are moving. So if you are uh, moving very, very slow at a very low temperature, you have low pressure. If you have a very high pressure, your particles are gonna move around very, very quickly, try to spread out as much as possible, increase the pressure of their container. And lastly, we haven't talked about Charles Law yet, but this is the new thing that we are introducing today. We've done pressure and volume, pressure and temperature, and we're introducing volume and temperature. Um, I really encourage you guys to, these two videos I've shown you, this one is new, this one's really interesting. You gotta watch this one, that one's cool. Um, what all of these different laws are introducing is this idea of the combined gas law. And the combined gas law, which you see right here, is actually on your reference tables. And um, anytime that we do a Boyle's law problem, a Charles law problem, a Gay-Lussac's law problem, they're all derived from the combined gas law. The only difference is that we hold one of the constants, one of these um, variables constant. So if we assume that our temperature isn't changing, then we can drop it out of our equation and do Boyle's Law. If we assume that volume isn't changing, we can drop volume out of the equation and it's Gay-Lussac's Law. If we assume that pressure isn't going to be changing, we can drop pressure out of the equation and it becomes Charles Law. So all of these things combine together into the combined gas law. Um, each of these different laws has a relationship between pressure, volume, or temperature. And um, usually in the real world, is one of these uh, one of these characteristics, pressure, volume, or temperature, going to be held constant? Usually no. Usually they're really working in concert. And as one changes, the other two react. Um, but we can approximate these, uh, these behaviors with these kind of cool experiments. So make sure you watch these to kind of wrap your head around it. Because where we're going is, where else in your life do you see these things happening? Um, I'm going to give another shout out to the, uh, the FET Colorado simulations. These simulations are really good. And um, I showed you this in an earlier lesson, but this is an awesome opportunity to mess with how these different characteristics, volume, uh, temperature, and pressure, affect your... Um, affect your affect each other. Excuse me, sorry, I got a little scattered there. So you see up here, if I hold volume constant, now we're experimenting with Gay-Lussac's law. If I hold temperature constant, 
now we're experimenting with Boyle's law. If I hold pressure constant, now we're experimenting with Charles' law. So I encourage you to get in here and mess around with this as much as you can. Um, again, back to this web here. I highly suggest you do this on a notebook to kind of keep yourself organized um, and write down some examples for yourself. Don't try to edit this file specifically. So now on to what I want you guys to do today. Um, there is an article, right? Uh, I will of course have office hours on Tuesday and also I'll be setting up additional office hours throughout the week that I will be um, posting. So be ready for those. So as you read this, think about uh, what questions am I going to be asking Mr. Andrews? What do I need clarified? Uh, what do we really need specifically to know that I need to understand better? So think about those things. Um, fill out the bubble map best you can. And of course, we'll have office hours to fill these up later. Where we're going with this, after you do that reading, whoops, after you do that reading and after you work on this bubble chart, you're going to be doing an exit ticket where you answer a kind of a what, why, and how. Pretty basic. Your claim, evidence, reasoning, they usually do in an exit ticket, but I just broke it down a little bit and it looks like this. Um, I want you to pick a scenario. It could be when you leave a basketball out in, um, leave a basketball outside and when you go to pick it up in the morning, it's really soft and deflated. Um, it could be if you put a bag of chips in the refrigerator, uh, the puffed up bag of chips becomes really flimsy and soft. It could be if you um, leave uh, if you leave a car out in the sun for a long time, the tire pressure sometimes goes up to a dangerous level and makes it easy for tires to pop. So these are all things that we can uh, scenarios that we can put in here that we can explore. And what I want you to do is tell me what is happening. So what gas law is, is being enacted here? Why is this happening? What are the particles doing? Are the particles moving faster? Is a shrinking container forcing particles closer together? Is an increasing volume pushing things farther apart? Um, you explain to me what's happening here. And then lastly, just a little reflection on how does this understand affect your understanding of how the world works? Maybe where can you take this application and apply it somewhere else? Um, whatever it is you want to do, this is really a reflective answer here. You see the meat and potatoes of the problem are here, three points, three points. So this is really what I want you to focus on, giving me good solid answers here. Uh, as always, you type your answer into the Google Doc um, and directions for turning it in are here. I'm on my teacher account, so I don't have this turn in button, but you will have the turn in button in the upper right corner here. So when you're done answering everything, you can click that turn in button. I'm of course not grading this, um, but I would like to see some jotted down answers in here and your exit ticket down here. Um, reminder, make sure you watch these videos right here. They're awesome. And write down any questions that you have for me to either email me or save them for office hours so I can answer them in person. All right, guys. Good luck. Have fun.